Hello everybody, it's me, Max Farrow again, and in this next part of the series for The Daily Signal, we're going to talk about working the working order. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, very simply, The Daily Signal. We're going to jump over to Deck Signals and have a look at the uh, signal, how it comes out here in just a second. But um, this will be about finding the right ones and also about learning to look at news and other factors, when to trade the daily signals and with working orders, and a few other smaller rule sets that we're gonna have, okay? All right, here we are. I'm just gonna jump in here, go to Pro Signals, and jump right over. This is Deck Signals. Okay, so take a second for the page to load here, um, compiling all the information. There you go. All right, so the first one, the first default right out of the box is the daily signals. And this is very important. As you can kind of see right now, we have a tremendous amount of signals hitting. Now, it's it's just past 10 o'clock in this example that we're doing. So I really wouldn't get into, I mean, listen, the daily signals you can get in just about any time, you know, depending on news and factors and all that. We're not going to consider so much about news right now because there's a lot of it happening right now this second here. Um, all this news just released a little bit earlier ago. This is uh, set to GMT. Let me set this to... Eastern time, so you can kind of see. Um, it's about 10 o'clock, so the news really did a number um, on the market here this morning. There's a lot of little bulls, a lot of three stuff that happened earlier at 7.30. Probably pushed these uh, signals around a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some blue in here today. Uh, this That does happen with the process. You see, you get a news pack and you kind of, this is why we say if you if you trade, be careful the quote pair and the base pair that you use. If you used a Euro USD and a USD CHF at the same time, you would have lost both trades in that. So you have to be very careful. And we'll also tell you here and surely when to not to trade the dailies. Okay. But let's look at this. The signal comes out usually, like we say, between 8, 8 and 8.15. Sometimes with news and other things that are happening, it might get hit at 8.30. There's a lot of little things. Um, that sort of fluctuate here. So from 8 o'clock in the morning, Eastern time, to all the way up to like 10, 1045, you're going to possibly get a signal. Now, the closest you get to the 11 o'clock hour, then a little bit more leery, I would be, of a signal firing off, right? Even though that it has still a pretty good success rate. Um, you can see that the success rate's right here. Um, open time, close time, asset, direction, open price, now, the open price is exactly what's on NADAC, so there's no guessing. So, 29.80 would be on uh, the USDCAD. Um, 1.0780, you got to add a fourth decimal in there, fourth point in there. Uh, 86 is just 8,600, right, on the auto GPY. Our system's a little fickle with zeros. It doesn't like a lot of zeros, right, <laughs> for some reason. All right, so let's look, at, let's just choose one, right? Let's just say that. Uh, which one would I choose out of this? Well, let me look at the highest rate success, the USD GPY at 97.9. That's huge. So I'm going to look at this one over on Nadex and we'll see what we can pull up here. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the, let me, let me expand the screen out, put it right in here so you can see it. Okay, so I'm just going to come over to my Forex binaries. I go to USD JPY. I'm going to look for the 11 a.m. There it is right there. Okay. And it's got a whole bunch of prices on it. So let me find out what what was that again. I probably should have written that down. And that's probably a lesson for you to learn too. So here we go. It's a uh, USD JPY at 112.60. So 112.60. That's what we're looking for. 112.60. And as we can see, remember, because it, it was for sell, right? is for sell, USD JPY for sell. And that's on the bid side. So 112.60 for sell. Now you can kind of see it's got some money in it. It's got a little bit of money in it, right? And because it's on the sell side, boom, we put our one contract size in. And now we want to do what? We want to get to this where it says max profit, right? $22. That's basically it. And I place the order. Now down here in my working orders, if we fit, oh, there's the Audi JPY from earlier's thing. But I want you to see something. The Audi JPY at 8,600. This was a guess earlier on um, when we were looking at the trade. Now we have it on for a buy. And the Audi JPY is for a buy. That was a complete guess. I just wanted you to know from the previous video, that was a complete guess. Pretty, pretty wild that that happened. Uh, but you can kind of see it's probably not going to get close. Um, 
let's look at another one. Now, because we have this, you know, USD, JPY, and Audi JPY, we have conflicting things in here that we just said, right? We don't want to have the same quote pair, right? So whichever one you think might get filled better, since this Audi JPY doesn't look like it's about to get filled, I can completely take that off, okay? Now, you're going to get an email. When that happens, when you do stuff like that, you're going to get an email that says, uh, working order canceled or, or order canceled. So don't don't be in fear that you mess something up. You're going to get an email with that says. But if you have this and it rides to expiry and doesn't fill, you won't get an email. All right. You'll get an email if you click off it and delete it. You'll get an email if it once it closes, you'll get a sediment email, all that kind of good stuff. So you, you can go over to Nadex Ninja series and watch that and it'll tell you all about that stuff. All right. Let's go look at another one real quick and just kind of because now we're in the US, we're not in the USD JPY, but we have one on the board that we feel very comfortable with. So let's go look at another one to find out what we could use. So we don't want to use a, the same pair, ba bo base or quote price or quote assets. So we want to find something that doesn't have any USD or JPY. So let's look at the um, Euro British Gold Pound, right? This is one we want to kind of look at uh, 85.20 on the buy. 85.20 on the buy. So let's get to Briscoe Pound GPY. Nope, that wasn't it. Euro Briscoe Pound. There it is. 11 o'clock. Very simple. 85.20 on the buy. Now, you can kind of see, look, this is pretty far, right? So if it's, if it's, if it's this far and there's only about an hour, 45 minutes left, I don't think we're going to be able to, to get anything in close to this. So would we even put it on? I would probably suggest not. Use a little bit of common sense here. If it's a, if it's really, really far, like a lot of news has pushed this thing way into the money, that's one thing. We could have probably been pretty good at 11 a.m., maybe would have dipped back down with some crazy news. Who knows, right? But we're not even trading with charts yet. We're just trading with the signal. So don't even worry about anything else. Okay, don't worry about looking at charts and deciphering all that. That stuff will come with experience. So right now, I would probably only have the one working order on. Um, I could go back and try to fill other ones in, but remember, it takes off that. Oh, look at that! Look at that! The USD just right before your eyes got filled. The uh, USD JPY just got filled. Uh, you know, I mean, we only put it on for a couple of minutes, and there it is, right? So we know that the USD is kind of fluctuating and playing around right at the moment. That it's coming back towards its original range um, because it just got picked up. Can it continue on? Go from there. In the notes of this training, I'll I'll show you whether or not this wins or if this loses. I'm not going to make you sit and wait for the two for the 45 minutes to to do that. And I have a lot of work to do myself. So that's the best part about this. I'm just going to set and forget this, and uh, let that on. Now, since I have one contract in, um, and I already have one on, I'm not going to worry about placing other working orders. That's another thing too. If you put two or three down here. If your account balance can only handle one working order, one contract at a time, once something fills, get everything else off. You know, you're going to have to pay attention to them and see if they're getting close and all that kind of good stuff, right? All right. So let's get back over and finish out this segment. Okay. So we talked about, we just showed you how to do the trade, how to get in, and one got filled like you almost immediately there. Uh, do we trade during news? Um, when to avoid the news is, is pretty important. Um, in most cases, you're going to avoid very big news, right? We're looking for news that have big run times, you know, two or three hours at a time. And we're also looking for news that appears in the very beginning part of the signal that uh, parades itself, you know, an hour before, an hour into it and all that stuff. So because the signals can get pushed around for the dailies. So if, and, and also if big news appears right at the end, like at 11 o'clock, that's very rare, but it can still happen. Um, also, the system can handle some new stuff like, um, you know, like two or three bulls and, you know, that kind of stuff. But NFP, non-farm payrolls and big giant, you know, you're like yelling, coming out and talking about, uh, you know, uh, the market collapsing and things like that, big, big event stuff. I would really stay away from it because you never really know. And when it does fail, it fails pretty big. There's, there's several, like if the USD falters pretty hard, it'll take out two or three pairs and two or three uh, signals in there. So just, 
just keep an eye on the, on the new side of it. Again, we haven't traded with any charts with any other systems yet. Now, just so you know, again, okay, and we'll put this into the description as well. Uh, here's when the expiries are for the dailies and when they should fire in those time frames. You know, and this could be 4 to 4.30, 5 o'clock in that time. But remember, the closer you get to expiry, the less reliable it becomes. So just keep that in mind as you go forward. I'm Max Farrow. This is Dex. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I want to thank you for your time. And as always, trade well. We'll see you in the next one.